Good morning, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. Today Yvonne and I are going to continue plastering the outside of the solar shed. We're just about wrapping up this project and as you can see behind me we've uh, been incorporating some new techniques and I'm going to go over those with you uh, right now. So in order to give the outside of the solar shed a little more visual interest and also to help uh, prevent massive absorption of the afternoon sun we're using a technique that I learned about from an architect his name is or name his name was Nadir Kalali from the Cal Earth Institute in Hesperia California I discovered Cal Earth Institute about 15 years ago when uh, I ran across an article about the super adobe eco domes and one of the techniques that they use is uh, they create what they what they call microclimates by covering portions of the buildings with these spheres. And uh, the ones that they make are a little more hand formed. We figured out a technique by using a small glass bowl to create very uniform shapes. But basically, the idea behind it is each one of these spheres, when the sunlight hits it creates uh, what Nadir Kalali called a microclimate. There'll be a sunlit portion, a shadow side, as well as a cast shadow. So whereas on a flat surface, the sunlight would hit it and the it would be fully illuminated, when the sunlight hits these spheres, it creates uh, shadows, which will also prevent massive uh, overheating of the wall. Let me show you on the other side where we have some direct sunlight going on right now. So this sunlight is, is being hit directly. It's about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning here, and the sun is hitting these spheres directly. You can still see, though, that there are pockets of shade and shadow side on each one of these spheres and that is going to aid in reducing the amount of uh, heat that the adobe walls or in this case uh, cob wall uh, absorbs so we're going to continue that I'm going to walk around the other side we're going to continue with this wall today and the goal is to fill in this entire area here with spheres and then uh, this side of the wall will be complete. You may notice here, let me show you one of the problems we had yesterday. When making this mixture, I'm using a little bit less straw because I want the, I want the spheres to be really nicely formed. So I'm using less straw in our mix and then we used that same mix to create this ledge. This was Yvonne's idea, and it really creates a really nice shadow effect. But the problem is we have a massive crack here, and so we'll have be repairing this crack. That's the only really major crack we had in the wall, but we'll have to address that today in the cobbing. I was getting our materials together today for the earthen plaster work we're going to do, and I realized that our reserve of clay uh, was not going to be enough to get us out through the day's work. So I am harvesting more clay. I'm in a wash here that's nearby our property. And all of these clumps that you see here are pure clay. All of these clumps, this is all pure clay. Everything around it is sand. Everything around this is sandy, but that is pure clay. So what I do is take this, run it through a quarter inch hardware cloth and uh, powder it up. And then we add that to our uh, native soil that we have on the property to make our earthen plaster. So the first step is getting the, the wall prepared. And what Yvonne is doing is using a normal uh, garden sprayer filled with water and she's wetting it down nicely, making sure that the substrate is good and damp. So we both have different techniques. Yvonne likes using the hand smear technique and what she does is applies the first coat or I should say 
gets the mud to stick to the wall using her hand. Why do you like that better, Yvonne? I, it just works for me the best than using the trowel. So, okay. It's just. Hey, whatever works. So after smearing it on by hand, she then uses a trowel and smooths it out. Now you got to remember this is going to be completely covered by these spheres that we're putting up. So it doesn't have to be real pretty. It does have to have a good mechanical bond though. Okay, so this is the technique we're using for putting these spheres on the uh, on the wall. Over at the Dollar Tree, we bought these little glass bowls. Usually you see them uh, being used on cooking shows for uh, uh, preparing um, herbs and spices. And so what we do is we pack that full with the mud, place it on the wall, and then really have to give it a good twist. The twisting does a couple things. It First of all, it kind of creams the mud to give it a nice soft creamy texture to fill in all the holes. And also it helps release the suction. There's quite a bit of suction that's created in that bowl. So we wet down the bowl, pack it. And now this mud is also specially prepared for this technique. We used a little bit less straw and a little more clay because we don't want big pieces of straw sticking out of these spheres. So apply it, give a good twist. And sometimes it's a little more difficult to remove, but it's coming off well. And then what we do is we go, th go back over it with some palette knives used for oil painting or acrylic painting and just kind of smooth out the edges. And that's how it's done. Simple, effective, and looks cool, too. That was the last sphere in the wall. Or as Pink Floyd would say, the last brick in the wall. And here's what it looks like. Pretty cool. Anyway, so that's it for the technique. Again, this will especially be effective when the sun is coming from the west, which this is the western wall, and it'll hopefully help reduce uh, the absorption of heat in the uh, cob wall. Anyways, if you have any questions about what we've done or about the technique we've used, feel free to put them in the comment box below. We appreciate you watching and we will catch you in the next video.